Parakesh Nochlin, Dav Kuf Lamidvav, sponsored for a bracha vatzlocha for Elisha ben Devorah. According to Shmuel and Rav Nachman, when a sick bed will states, witnesses affected in acquisition, in addition to the seriously ill person's verbal declaration to convey, or the seriously ill person stipulated also write, sign, and give it to the recipient, both evident its purpose is to reinforce his verbal declaration, it is permitted to write, and the recipient can acquire after death. We move on to a new Mishnah. The Chachamim granted a special dispensation for a Shechid Meira, a seriously ill person, to convey a gift verbally without a formal act of transfer to be effective after death. On the other hand, the healthy person cannot convey a gift after death, even with a formal act of transfer. This mission discusses the manner a healthy person can convey a gift effective after his death. The first ruling, Rabbi Huda holds he must stipulate Mehayom Ulachar Misa. Mehayom conveys rights to his land from today, and Ulachar Misa conveys rights to, to its produce after his death. Rabbi Yossi holds he does not have to stipulate Mehayom. Rav Huna explains, even if the document states only Le'achar Misa, the date included in the document indicates a transfer takes effect, at least in part, before his death. First question. Concerning a divorce document that states, Me'ayom Le'achar Misa, effective from today and after I die, is a questionable get. It is uncertain whether his intent was it should be effective now retroactively after his death or retract his, his, his initial statement of Hayom, stating presently the get is effective only after his death, which is illegal. This doubt should apply to our case as well. The answer, a divorce cannot go into effect in two stages. Therefore, the document can only be interpreted as a stipulation or retraction. However, one can transfer property in two stages, land immediately, produce later. Therefore, we interpret this as his intent. Second question, does Rabbi Yehuda require the term Me'ayom B'Hakno? This document records the acquisition performed by the witnesses rather than it being the instrument of transfer. The answer, Rapapi holds it depends how the document is worded. If it mentions first the benefactor's instruction to witnesses, acquire for the recipient, and then mentions their actual acquisition, indicated by the document, the additional inclusion is to emphasize his immediate acquisition. However, if the acquisition was mentioned first, the latter mention of the benefactor's instruction is to determine where they acquired a right to acquire. Rav Hunabred, Rav Yeshua, disagrees. He holds Rav Yehuda requires Mehayom, only in a document that records a transfer of property, but makes no mention of an acquisition. Mehayom indicates an immediate, at least partial, acquisition. The second ruling, the consequences of a two-stage gift. Neither the father nor his son can sell the land fully. The father has rights to the produce, and the son has rights to the land. The father sold the produce, the buyer is entitled to consume it until he dies. If the son sold the land, the buyer cannot benefit from it until the father dies. Question. If the son dies before the father, does the buyer ever acquire? The answer. It is a machlokas. Rabbi Yochanan holds he does not acquire because Kenyan Perus Kikinyan ad guf dummy, a father who retained ownership of the produce remains the primary owner. Therefore, the son could not convey ownership until his father's death when he would have acquired it. Since he died first, the buyer did not acquire. Although Rabbi Yochanan stated one who owns only Pradus and that land can recite the Bikurim verses in the Torah, including the verse Ho'adamash and Asat Ali, perhaps conveying land to his son, he would relinquish primary rights. Therefore, Rabbi Yochanan teaches even in our case, the father remains primary owner. Reish Lakish holds he does does acquire Kenyan Paris Lavki Kenyan Aguf. Although the father retained rights to the produce, his son acquired the land conveyed to the buyer. Therefore, after the father dies, the buyer is entitled to the property. According to Reish Lakish, the fact that he cannot read the verses when bringing Bikurim is not a proof to our case. 
Perhaps when he retains ownership of produce for himself, he retains the land as well. Therefore, Reish Lakish teaches us otherwise. An exception to the principle, Kinyan Peres Lavki, Kinyan Aguf, is where he says, Acharecha Yirash Poloni, after you, so-and-so shall inherit. He said it to two, three, two, two, three people. The first and second beneficiaries are limited to their lifetimes, not so for the third. Since he acquires only by way of the first and second, the original owner conveyed full rights to them. Although generally limited ownership applies only to produce, in this case, Rish Lakish extends it to the land. If you're enjoying Daphne 5, please click on the link below, subscribe, and become a sponsor. Thank you.